Hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, London FX Open Breakfast. Thanks very much for joining. Um, what a fascinating uh, couple of days, really. Uh, European markets have just opened. It looks like we're getting set up for another day of declining stocks, but also, obviously, so sovereign fears emanating from Spain. Um, and let's get straight into the price action, because it's been so interesting. After what was um, a lot of... What was frustrating for some in terms of range-bound markets, um, things not necessarily uh, breaking out. Well, we've got exactly the opposite here. Um, we're seeing some incredibly interesting price action going on. Um, so let's uh, let's get going. Let's take a quick look at what what we're talking about. So hopefully you can see my chart here. Um, I believe you can. If FX Street admin could just let me know. So the camera's working okay, and then we'll get started. We're going to start with euro, actually, not with yen. I'll get back to yen. Um, this is the, the uh, daily uh, chart for uh, the candlestick chart for euro dollar, and it really tells the entire story, if you like. Um, this is the range here. Um, as you can see, weak within its range. Um, what we just wanted to kind of draw your attention back to what happened in April, uh, sorry, in February, in mid February. Um, this was really important. So this level, so around this kind of 130.50 to 130.150 level, very, very sticky zone, kind of bottom of the most recent range is obviously 135 being the high. What we saw here, I just want to draw your attention to this candlestick here. Um, it, it, it basically shows kind of a weakening of the, of the bears, really. So we've seen it fall off. We've seen a euro dollar come, come off quite sharply down here, as you can see, over a number of days. Um, but we really did get a reversal, and that reversal pattern here, as you can see, very long lower shadow, uh, but we had a, a positive close, because obviously the positive candles are in green, the negative ones are in red. Uh, so we had a positive close that day, and then that kind of triggered our uptrend, and it was all the way uptrend until we got to 135, where it got very, very sticky. But what we've noticed here, there's obviously a double bottom there. Um, we haven't really seen the same price action here. There's nothing right now to tell me that we're in a bit of a reversal. So it suggests that we're in a lower stage of the range. Um, obviously, we've got some natural, um, we've got some natural uh, resistance levels from where we are. Um, as I mentioned, 13150 is going to be a big resistance level. The high today so far has been 13133. The high yesterday was 13144. Um, I also want to show you. Um, I just want to show you the daily chart, really, just to show show you that there. Obviously, this kind of 13140 level is very stiff resistance, and then above there, of course, 13150, and then of course 13179. Um, again, the MACD and the RSI they are pointing slightly higher, potentially moving into um, some overbought territory at the moment. So uh, with euro dollar, we don't think going up or down in a straight line. Uh, what we're seeing at the moment, we're not really seeing anything to suggest that we're going to make another break higher for 135. But equally, the market is a little bit cautious as we get close to one as we get close to one thirty, especially that one thirty fifty. Now, just bear with me a moment because I want to pull up my other chart to show you the um, Ichimoku. For those of you who don't know Ichimoku, um, it's kind of a Japanese way of looking at the market. Now, I'm not someone who looks at crazy amounts of indicators or anything like that. I, I really don't. Uh, but I do like the Ichimoku because I do think that it's uh, it's a very simple way of looking at the market. It gets across um, as it, it's used by a lot of people in the market, and it's also a great way of getting across market sentiment. Um, basically, for those of you who don't know, for those of you who do, bear with me. I do apologize. Uh, but essentially, um, in the cloud means there's no real trend. Above it, uptrend. Below it, downtrend. Um, and then there's some support and resistance in the middle there, um, in the Tenkan and the Kijun lines. Uh, there's also the, um, the lagging kind of crossover line, which is also important. But we're not going to go into that here because there's plenty of books and, and other people that you can go to for um, expert Ichimoku analysis. I just use it as part of my uh, FX trading toolkit, if you like. But what is this chart telling me? So this is a daily chart. It's telling me, again, very weak within its range. Once we kind of fell through uh, that kind of 132.60, which is the top of the cloud there, so the orange line on this chart, um, we, we were weak. I mean, we fell so quickly um, to the bottom of that cloud here. As you can see, the bottom of the cloud is 130.56. That is why 130.50 is really, really important level. Now, some people have also mentioned the uh, 130.30 level, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but obviously, below 130.50, there really isn't much in the way of 130. And then once you get below 130, uh, we're then obviously looking at the January lows towards that kind of 126.30 to 50 zone. 
Um, so looking very weak at the moment. Now there is obviously this key level of support here at 130.50. We have been bouncing around kind of within 100 pit points of that. Um, but unless we see a really, um, a re unless we see kind of a real kind of push by the bulls uh, to get us at least above that 132 level, then to me it looks like we could potentially be going lower. And the fact is that we're just, we're just kind of experiencing what's quite normal pullbacks, but there doesn't seem to be a real push by the bulls. We're not getting any follow through anyway. Um, when we kind of move back above 131, uh, we're being stunted at that 131.50 level um, at the moment, which is which is quite worrying. Obviously, we have got sovereign strains emerging in Spain. We do know that um, sovereign fears have a good have a negative correlation to risks. So that means as bond yields or sovereign fears increase in Europe, uh, particularly in Spain at the moment, then we're seeing risky assets come off. Uh, but really, what it looks to me, what it just looks to me, is that the bears have got control of euro dollar. Um, and, and again, you know, euro dollar never moves down in a straight line. It's probably the least, you know, it's the most traded currency pair in the world. It's probably the least um, efficient, if you like, of all the pairs because people trade euro dollar for various reasons. Uh, but it does suggest that sentiment very, very weak for euro dollar. Even though we've seen today that kind of push higher, um, I think that there there are a key there are a few key things to watch out for. We could be stuck in a bit of a range. Um, and certainly for today, as I said, 130, 150, then 132. If we don't clear that, then it looks like we could retest that 130, 50 level. So that's where we are in the short term. We think in the longer term that we're definitely in for a test of 130, potentially even a breach of 130, which would open the way to 129.50. Now, I just also, um, just bear with me one moment, just changing my chart. I also just want to show you a lot of people are looking at um, a 130, 30 level. It's like a neckline, really, from this head and shoulders pattern that some people have been pointing out. Now, obviously, head and shoulders are they they are they can be um, you know fairly difficult to spot. Um, you know, they're not perfect, as you can see here. The right shoulder is slightly higher than the left. We did point that out the last couple of weeks. This pattern has been forming. Um, obviously, the neckline here kind of comes in around that 130 again between 130 30 and 130 50 level. Um, we could even go like that actually to get that to go all the way down to 130. If I just get rid of this here, um, so we we would potentially uh, expect it. But basically, signs point to us that we're we're going to be uh, you know for a break lower. Uh, but as I said, you know euro dollar is always very sticky, so do watch out for that. But obviously, um, we what we're looking at at the moment is this failure to really um, follow through on gains, um, follow through even above kind of 130, 150. I would also draw your attention to just the MACD and the RSI, really flatlining, still pointing lower than MACD. MACD is a bit of a lagging indicator actually relative to the RSI. Um, suggested it's kind of, it is, you know, it's going to kind of, it could potentially bounce around here. Now we would completely expect that. When you get close to really key levels like 130, which is a massive psychological level, because remember we're all hardwired to look at these whole numbers and potentially what you, what you see are three things. You either see the price shoot through it, you see the price uh, repel away from it, so bounce higher from it, or you see the price kind of move sideways, and that's what we're seeing here is a bit of a sideways action, uh, but potentially sideways action before we test lower. Uh, we do think that obviously the, the sovereign concerns in Spain um, will be, could potentially weigh very heavily on the euro, um, especially if it looks like Spain is going to require a bailout, because obviously that would be the largest country, fourth largest economy, um, to get into trouble in Europe so far. Um, it also suggests that, there, you know, at the moment there doesn't seem to be um, a, a lot of, um, you know, action from the central bank or, or there's certainly not enough bailout funds really to, to tide Spain over for any uh, significant length of time or necessary length of time. Interestingly enough, just on the fundamental front, um, I don't think I've heard as much from Spanish officials as I've heard in the last couple of days. And yet again, the Prime Minister Rajoy is even out today saying Spain has an urgent task of cutting its deficit. Remember, these Spanish fears have really been um, uh, increased really since that budget of two weeks ago now, or nearly a week and a half ago now, uh, where it just looks like kind of growth is going to be terrible. The budget certainly isn't going to help growth. And the markets are kind of freaking out on two sides. Number one, markets like growth. Uh, number two, uh, missed fiscal targets, those type of things um, are more likely because uh, obviously growth is weaker, makes it less likely that you're going to bring in the money that you need to pay down your debt. 
um, which is kind of all very worrying. So on a fundamental basis, um, it says sell, sell, sell the euro on a um, on a uh, technical basis. It says just hold on, just be a little bit cautious. Um, obviously, you know, we do think that a break of that kind of 130 level is going to be absolutely key. Uh, potentially, even kind of 130, a break of 130, 30. Uh, would be would be uh, kind of hit, indicate much lower levels um, and potentially a break of this range. Right now we're not in a range, but we do think that selling pressure will come in at 131.50. So it's about range trading. It's about letting it play, uh, letting it move the way that it wants to move for now. So letting it get up to that 131.50 if it wants to make another attempt at it. And there's probably going to be some buying pressure around that 131.45 to 50 level. Or sorry, selling pressure around 131.50, 45 to 50. Um, and then the kind of, you know, buying pressure again coming in at 130, 30, 50. So again, it's trading a very, very tight range. Some people may rather wait until you see that break down, but until we see a break on either one side or the other. But as I said, we don't think there's going to be much follow through unless we convincingly get break above 130, 132. So even though I'm looking for it to go lower, um, I think there's kind of all the setup there for it to go lower. I probably wouldn't, um, I, I, I believe that I would be wrong if we were to break above 132. Okay, let's move on. Dollar yen, uh, what a kind of fascinating um, journey this has been. Uh, very, oh, sorry, my fault. Just done the wrong one here. Dollar yen looks like, doesn't it, like the bears have got control of this one. Uh, that's what the MACD and the RSI is telling us. One thing I am just a little bit concerned about on the MACD side of things, slightly, we've had a big surge lower suggests we could be in oversold territory, suggests we could bounce around a little bit. Remember, dollar yen, very much the uh, the, the fight between the two safe havens. Um, the yen is winning that fight at the moment, but I am concerned by that massive surge in, in the MACD, especially when it's been kind of flatlining or when, um, or when it had been kind of bouncing around between 83 and 84. Um, something different has changed. Uh, the dollar has obviously weakened. That's on the back of some fairly dovish comments from Ben Bernanke at the Federal Reserve. Um, and, you know, that's why we've seen this price, you know, that's kind of reflective of this price action. Now, I am concerned, though, that we could be over, oversold. Um, the one thing I want to show you as well, just bear with me, I'm going to pull up my other chart again, another Ichimoku. Apologies, um, but it, but it really, I, I really like Ichimoku. I, like, I, I do think um, they're not really a gimmick. I think they have some very good information. Uh, especially when trading dollar yen, of course, because uh, Ichimoku is a Japanese, it was, it was does originate from Japan uh, in the 1960s, actually, by a journalist. Um, and it uh, basically, what is this telling us? Again, it's saying that, yes, the bears have got control. Um, we're getting close to some really key levels. We, we completely fell like a stone through the Tankan, which is the pink line, and the Kijin is the yellow line. Uh, they basically act as good support and resistance levels. So broke through that support fairly easily. But that support fairly easily, and the next major support level here is 79.93. Important for two level, two reasons. Number one, top of the Ichimoku cloud. Once we break through that, I suggest the end of the uptrend. Right. Number two is uh, the fact that it's through 80 and 80. As I said, you know, we're all hardwired for these whole numbers. Like 130 for euro, like 130 for euro dollar, 80 is really pivotal uh, for dollar yen as well. So uh, we are watching that. Obviously, 80, 80 has been a bit sticky. We found a little bit of support there the last couple of days. Um, yesterday, we traded in a very tight range between 80, 64 and 80, 81. Uh, we tra sorry, we traded between 80, 64 on the downside. Um, and then we got all the way back to 81, 86. Um, today, a very, very tight, uh, obviously, you know, during the Asia session, not too much movement there at all between 8060 and 8095. So the fact that we haven't been able to break above that 81 level is really pivotal. Just two things. Number one, uh, this dollar trend may not be, um, may not be ongoing. Uh, we did also see US Treasury yields break below 2% yesterday. Um, we, for the first time since January, uh, which is really, uh, pivotal because dollar yen does follow Treasury yields pretty closely. Um, and we really haven't made any concerted effort to break to go back above 81. So this 8080 level has been has been a bit sticky between kind of 8060 and 8080. Um, but we but really basically between here and uh, 7990, there's not too much um, support. So if we see kind of another if we see another day where by we get rising Spanish bond yields, and that could be enough to test this really key 80 level and then obviously 79.93 which is this um, top of this top of the cloud here 
Um, and again, as you can see, the cloud is narrowing, um, suggesting really that the, the trend is um, um, suggesting really that the kind of the the, the bears have got the upper hand, and the, and the trend could be um, could essentially kind of move sideways. If we if we continue to see a narrowing of this cloud, like we've seen here, um, there's not going to be that much between there and a downtrend. So you know, do watch out. Um, around the kind of 83 mark, even 82 mark, I think people thought, okay, this is just a normal pullback. It looks like it's something a bit more serious than that now, though. Uh, the other uh, thing, the other cross I want to show you, just bear with you one moment, is euro yen. Uh, euro yen is all. Euro yen has been falling like a stone. Obviously, the yen very much in the ascendancy. Um, here we go. We've got uh, euro yen here. Very yen, very much in the ascendancy. Euro, uh, you know, the best way to play the euro at the moment is is against the strong currencies. So as you can see here, euro yen, uh, yen very strong, euro very weak. Um, it's come off stay sharply. I mean, it was at 111 like two weeks ago. It's now kind of, you know, dropped kind of six big figures nearly uh, below there. Uh, it's currently testing its 200-day moving average. So that is the uh, moving out. That should act as fairly good support. We would expect a bit of stickiness around here. And um, that comes in at kind of 106.15, uh, currently kind of around 10, between kind of 105. Um, Uh, that comes in, that we've kind of been, you know, basically bouncing around between kind of 105, um, 50, 60, um, and uh, kind of 106, um, 20. So between kind of 105, certainly in the short term anyway. Um, uh, someone's just asked me about my comments for Euro Dollar. I did give me give you my comments at the beginning, so um, I'm go I'm going to hold off from that at the moment if you don't mind. I don't believe it will touch 134 by this weekend. Um, I was very clear, I think, in saying that I, I believe that a break below its potential to 130 is a, is the key thing. But between 130.50 and 131.50 is most important. So let's get back to Euro Yen. Um, between 105, 105.80 and 106.20, that's a really sticky area. Um, obviously, uh, this this pair, this cross is moved by sentiment completely. Um, we could potentially see, if we see a break uh, below kind of 105.50, um, obviously, you know, the MACD here and the RSI suggest that we could be kind of just bouncing around a little bit. We could, would be very normal for us to kind of claw back a bit of gains after yesterday's sharp move lower. Um, and as you can see on the daily chart, it does look like we're getting a bit of, uh, we, you know, we've, we've had a bit of a rounded bottom at 105.50. Um, again, that's being followed through by the RSI and the MACD. However, there is stiff resistance at 106.25 and then, of course, at 106.50. Um, so these are like really key levels um, that we do need to, you know, that we do need to watch out for. Um, you know, Euro Yen is going to, it, Euro Yen is going to find it very difficult to rally if concerns in Spain remain as, as heightened as they are. Um, you know, we've, as you can see, what a really lovely downtrend. You know, it's going to take a move back, back above kind of 107 to 107.50, really, for us to um, to really get excited and think that the trend has turned. If anything, it just suggests to us now um, that, yes, we could be in for a bit of a pullback. But if we were to get, you know, the next level of this Eurozone sovereign debt crisis, which means Spain, so potentially Spain um, moving really towards a, a bailout territory, um, which is only about 100 basis, it's 10-year bond yield is only about 100 basis points away from that because it did get above one above 6% last week. Um, that is really worrying. But as I said, in the near term, 105.50 to kind of 106.20-ish, um, that's kind of the short-term range. Um, obviously, if we don't get above kind of 106.20, uh, we could kind of, again, retest those lows around 105.80, then 105.50. Um, to break below 105.50, we do believe we'll need to see um, some further weakness in the uh, in the sovereign space. So if you were to continue to see bond yields moving higher today, that's something else to watch out for. Um, I also do want to touch on um, sterling. So I'm going to look at sterling um, here. I'll look at it on this chart first. So as you can see, sterling actually has held up fairly well. Now we got some good BRC retail sales data, so some good signals on the on the consumption front in the UK economy um, overnight. 
Um, and that has been, and that kind of propelled this move higher. So as you can see, this is the day, this is the hourly chart, really propelled the move higher. But again, around about that 159, 20 to 30 zone is really, really sticky and has thwarted the bulls yet again. Um, let's look at the daily, just see what that's telling us. As you can see, very good support levels here, um, above just below kind of 159, so around kind of 158, um, kind of 158, 85 to 158, 50. Um, it's a very, very good support zone on the daily chart, so the daily moving averages. Um, and we have bounced off that, but again, we found it very difficult to make headway above kind of 159, 25-ish, um, certainly today and yesterday, again, the same, that 159, 25 to 30 level was proving quite um, quite worrying. But I do think this is a really interesting um, chart pattern that we or candle pattern that we're seeing here. Obviously, yesterday, uh, we've got that very long lower shadow. The fact that we've got that very long lower shadow, and then we kind of managed to kind of bounce above it, really, um, it suggests that this kind of 158 zone is going to hold, or could potentially hold. Um, because it, when you've got the long lower shadows, it does suggest that kind of the bears um, did make, certainly make an attempt um, at that 158 zone, but um, couldn't close it. They didn't couldn't close, seal the deal, if you like, uh, by pushing it all the way down there. Uh, but it does, you know, we're very much still range bound territory uh, between kind of 159.50, 158 on the downside. As I said, some very good support, but. Um, you know, that, that kind of is a bit of a, a short-term reversal pattern, really, for me. Um, that kind of long, that long uh, uh, lower shadow there in the in yesterday's candlestick um, does suggest potentially that we, um, you know, it, it, it supports the move that we've had today. Um, it does suggest that, you know, kind of we've got some very um, strong supports on the way down. And the pound really has been a bit more protected relative to the euro um, during the last couple of weeks of, um, of this kind of risk sell-off. Um, obviously, there is a fundamental reason for that. When you, problems in Europe flare up, um, it tends to drive safe haven flows into the gilt market, so the UK government bond market, which is pound positive, and we've seen that um, through other um, during other crises as well. Um, obviously, in November, um, October, November, we did see a sharp fall, and, and the pound did eventually fall, but it did hold up quite well first. Um, and tends to kind of lag the move lower in euro dollar. Um, we would say on one thing, so on a daily basis, uh, still looking fairly good. Obviously, um, you know, certainly in its last kind of few days, looking like it's at the top of its range. Um, you know, lots of support on the way down, a lot of support between 159.50. We believe it was a bit of a false break below 159.50 last week. Um, towards that 158 zone, we know that, you know, even are at the open, so at the European Open yesterday, obviously that was the start of the week for Europe because they had been out on, on public holiday, uh, but we know that that um, caused a lot of, or, or we do know certainly that that, um, uh, you know, we did, we even though we tested low, uh, kind of 158.50 yesterday, we didn't, didn't, did not last long. Um, however, on a daily chart, pretty much isn't telling us anything. It's suggesting that we're still flatlining. So overall, the outlook on the longer term for for the pound or pound sterling or pound dollar is a kind of range bound territory, as I said. Uh, but the pound is showing signs of strength, and where you're really seeing that is actually in euro euro sterling. Um, a lot of people are liking euro sterling at the moment because obviously you always want to pitch the weak currencies against the strong ones. And the pound is kind of the, the stronger currencies out of that risky bunch, so out of the non-safe havens. The pound is actually looking fairly strong. Obviously, um, you know, we, we shot through kind of 82.50. Um, we are looking fairly uh, fairly weak right now. Um, on a daily basis, certainly, we could potentially um, skid along the bottom here for a while because we have had such a big move lower. Um, let's move to kind of the daily. So as you can see, sorry, the hourly chart, I mean, um, as you can see, we've had a really kind of sharp move, kind of three, um, uh, you know, 200 pip move really in the past um, couple of weeks. Uh, for euro sterling, that's quite a lot, obviously, because it doesn't it usually moves within a fairly tight range. Uh, but as as you can see, below 82.50, if we even go to a longer chart term chart, this is really significant level. You know, of course, it's going to be sticky around here. This is a key key support level that the market is going to respect. Now, if we see the, the euro start to make some gains, um, say if it was to break above 132, uh, then potentially we could see kind of a move back towards the 83 zone 
in uh, euro sterling. So we think that you know obviously trading um, is all kind of fractal really. Um, so what go what happens in euro dollar will impact the other crosses of course. Um, so do watch out for that there. Um, obviously 82 below 8250 it's a really it's a really significant level. If we were to see another um, flare up of the crisis or lurch higher in Spanish bond yields without any intervention from the from the policymakers in Europe, and then we could potentially test 82. However, the, the more stressed the bond market in Spain becomes, the more likely it is that a Eurozone authority or the ECB may come in and act. So do watch out for that, that if we are to see kind of a real kind of collapse in risk um, in the next few days, so maybe Euro dollar uh, testing 130 below 130, stocks selling off quite sharply, then potentially that could spark um, the uh, the that could potentially spark um, the ECB to take more action in the EU to take more action, even if it's something symbolic like another another um, summit. Um, and what we've seen in the past is that during these summits, it can cause risk to rally. Of course, also be be on the lookout for um, for Fed speakers and, and see how close they are to QE because that's obviously QE in the US is dollar negative, risk asset positive. Now, just before I go, I do want to just, on that note, tell you, show you um, the S&P 500. So just take a quick look at equities. I know this is the FX breakfast, but uh, you know you don't trade um, in isolation, of course. Um, and as you can see, to me, it looks like uh, we've gone shot through that 50-day moving average at 1372. Uh, currently around that 1360, 1358 to 60 mark. Uh, futures are pointing for a slightly higher open, actually. Yesterday, obviously, we had a big rout lower. Um, but it suggests to me that the bulls have really lost control. So, uh, you know, everything's kind of taking its cue from Spain at the moment. Someone just asked a great question, could Spain become another Greece? Um, in terms of could Spain be bailed out, yes. Um, could Spain necessarily have to renegotiate its debts? Remember, its debts as a percentage of GDP aren't nearly as high. They're about half the level they are in Spain. So it would be wrong of me to say that Spain was like a Greece. Um, we don't believe it is. Obviously, it's got big problems. The reason why the market is very worried about Spain is because of its growth problems. It's got very high unemployment. It's not growing at all. In fact, its economy is shrinking. Um, and the budget's really not doing anything to boost growth. And obviously, during this period when you've got very high unemployment, you need growth. So bizarrely, and this is kind of the, the strange way that the Eurozone works, the pro-austerity budget is actually weighing on investor sentiment because it does weigh on growth, even though markets do expect them to kind of cut their deficit as well. So it's kind of a lot to get your head around, but it does really, you know, that's kind of the difference. So, so Greece's problems are the fact that it's insolvent. Um, it's got many deep political issues. Uh, Spain's main problem is about growth. So if it can grow, then it won't become Greece. The problem is it's not growing. Growth doesn't look anywhere in sight. That could mean that it does need a bailout, especially if investor sentiment kind of shirks away from the to, from weak growth economies like it does seem to be at the moment, of, or from kind of contracting economies, I should say. Um, then Greece, Spain may need a bailout, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to become another Greece. Remember, Greece is kind of on its own at the moment in the Eurozone, and the fact that it's negotiated, uh, or it's, it's you know negotiated, um, it's had a selective default, I should say. It's negotiated part of its debt. Um, it's also um, you know had many issues with elections, with the way that it's governed. Uh, Spain does have a few problems with the way it's governed. It's kind of again a bit like Greece in the sense that its government is quite fractured. Um, a lot of the regional authorities are um, are kind of you know a lot of the auto a lot of the public spending I issues are in the regional um, autonomous regions, um, and that is always much more difficult to cut um, that type of spending than it is if you cut kind of central government spending. So um, uh, very difficult uh, you know difficult situation for Spain certainly um, a worrying situation for investors yes. Um, and it's enough to cause, you know, this kind of risk sell-off that we're seeing at the moment. So, again, right now, as we start another day, it's all about Spain. Everyone's going to be looking at that. Is the ECB going to act? Are the EU authorities going to act? Right now, they haven't. Will Spanish bond yields continue their march higher? I mean, yesterday they moved. Um, actually, let me just take a look at that. They, they moved a tremendous amount, um, you know, just in the last kind of three days, they kind of moved 25 basis points. That's an awful lot um, for, for, for a bond yield to move in one day. 
Um, so it will be interesting to see. Now, obviously, they've backed away this morning from um, they've backed away this morning quite sharply, actually, from the six percent level. So it suggests maybe the ECB is coming in, and that's why we've seen this kind of positive open European open, um, and certainly seen it in kind of euro with clawing back a few of its recent losses. But um, but it is um, in it is a, a, a worrying time for Europe, and that really is on the market's mind. Um, Stock markets have reversed just a little bit just before we go. Um, reversed, a, reversed a tiny bit, kind of following that Spanish bond yield, but it's all about Spanish bond yield. So do read up as much about that or follow us um, as we um, as we uh, go through it this morning. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining. Please do join me on Friday uh, for the last one of the week, uh, but some interesting price action going on, that's for sure.